What we did was, uh, in order to get things going, was essentially to combine expertise from the glass coating business, from the display uh, equipment business, and from the automotive industry, so that the uh, capability to make a package that would last a long time outdoors wasn't an experiment, it was something that we know about. You can go to the field today and see thin film solar modules that have been in the field more than 20 years that produce the same amount today as they did 20 years ago. You can go to the field today and see crystalline silicon modules that have an output that's the same today as more than when they were built about 30 years ago. So no longer do we have to, to uh, sort of do a soft shoe dance when somebody says, how do you know this is gonna last? We know that we can build it to last. We know that we can adapt the equipment from these other industries to be able to scale and get cost down and have a long-lived product, because this is uh, also about financing. It's about people knowing that when they invest their capital in this energy-producing product, that it's gonna last a long time. The escalation that we've seen in oil prices, it's kind of a, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. And you can go with solar now and not worry about what happens later. So with our thin film lines, uh, we've had a number of customers who've come along. Uh, their in interests are in the energy business. Their interests come not so much about which machine or which nuance of a particular process or which semiconductor layer did you pick. Their interest is to get into the power sector quickly, to bring solar power to bear on the growing energy needs that the world has everywhere around the world. And it's not just in developed countries like Germany or the US or Japan, but there's huge opportunities where a lot of folks have spent many years in solar. In developing countries are also gonna see an enormous opportunity to match the use of clean energy in modular form that can be built in a predictable time frame to meet the needs of electricity supply. This is a typical display tool. This was not Photoshop edited. Those are real people who are about six feet tall standing uh, next to the equipment. So this is a typical kind of equipment that goes into a SunFab line. This turnkey production line, glass comes in one side and solar panels go out the other side. These kinds of facilities, there's uh, uh, two of them here in Germany and uh, Dresden. One at Signet and uh, one at Sunfilm. And a number in other parts of the world, uh, India, Spain, China, Taiwan. Almost everywhere around the world, a lot of people get it. They see that the costs are coming down quickly and that getting to market first, building that brand image and being able to build up a business around this is a, a tremendous uh, financeable business possibility. This is a little montage of uh, some of the kinds of equipment. The autoclave in the upper right-hand side is typical, or actually a slightly smaller version of what you would find in a typical automobile uh, windshield lamination facility. So that the first products that go out into the field made with thin films we know will last. They'll be reliable and durable, and we are not uh, gambling on uh, working with some new and, and untested material. Most of these materials have been around for decades. So here's a, a combination of materials that we know about that have been around, in some cases, close to 30 years or more, and tools that have come from another space to allow this uh, cost reduction to happen. The, it took 10 months in one case that uh, you can see at the Inner Solar Show uh, with a company, Signet, that uh, built up from the time they ordered a facility, they got the factory built, got the equipment in, and are making modules in that facility. If you go to the uh, exhibition at InterSolar tomorrow, they'll actually have live video of modules being made and they're gonna uh, truck one from uh, the Dresden facility uh, here so you can see it, test it, uh, check it out. 
We have a, a very detailed roadmap for how to lower costs well below a dollar a watt. So I want to talk a little bit about how predictable this is, because this is a very straightforward manufacturing industry here, bringing a lot of the capabilities and competencies, many cases the fabs that are run today building solar panels are run by people who came from the IC industry, who know about design of experiments, statistical process control to optimize yield and further lower the costs. Today, with just a single line that uh, is running at about uh, 50 megawatt per year throughput, has a manufacturing cost of about $1.50 a watt. To get to $1 a watt with that same smaller size, a 50 megawatt size, there's a number of things that can be done to lower material costs, to improve yields, to improve throughput, and that come about by being able to improve efficiency. All of these are very predictable elements that have schedules, roadmaps, project managers, and schedules that are adhered to uh, for being able to continue to lower the cost. And we're on track. We've built uh, tandem junction modules that are stable at uh, over 9.3% efficiency. So we know from the starting point where we are today, you saw just uh, earlier, Suntor was one of our, was our, uh, our first tandem junction thin film customer uh, that uh, Dr. Hanna showed a module at uh, uh, about 7.9% or so. And we know how to take that module and further uh, improve its performance. A lot of that performance comes about because of the science of the materials, being able to control not just the semiconductor layers uh, that uh, Travis showed earlier on, but being able to control the coatings, the transparent conductors, uh, optimize light scattering, minimize direct material thicknesses, further saving costs, both in thin films as well as is happening in crystal and silicon today. There's a, a very straightforward roadmap that gives everybody confidence especially from the banking community, that this is a good business to invest in, a predictable business, and a safe uh, investment. Some of the kinds of things that happen as we go to larger scale earlier this year, we announced our first customer for a gigawatt size fab, so multiple production lines running in parallel that have economies of scale simply because of the scale of the lines, where uh, uh, working on energy efficiency, working with the direct material suppliers, the glass companies, the polymer companies, not only companies that are like applied materials making tools, but companies that have not previously thought about solar, now see the business reality that exists with solar and are making investments in expanding their facilities to bring silane feedstocks, to bring glass, to bring the encapsulation that's necessary. There's no fundamental reason why the solar panel with no moving parts shouldn't be able to last 50 years or longer. There are very straightforward things that we can do with the uh, technologies here. We have quite a, a detailed roadmap of where we can address each of the sort of heavy hitter elements to get well below that dollar per watt manufacturing cost with just one single production line. 